So this is Snaddy's uh, guide in the SIP4 strategy ar uh, articles, a guide for higher difficulties for standard speed maps at emperor level. The first thing that he suggests is uh, to pick a financial or philosophical leader. The very first thing you'll do um, when you plant your city is you're going to build a worker first. Uh, he's going to improve the land around the capital, which should accelerate your growth in the capital. So you're going to prioritize food. So you want to research the technologies that you're going to need to improve the lands around the um, around the capital. After you've got the technologies you need to improve the capital, then you go archery to build your defense, because at the higher levels, um, the barbarians tend to spawn and cause more problems at a higher rate and also it helps your power graph get higher which will avoid the computer from attacking you. So you'll go archery for defense and then bronze working for chopping. Um, when you chop to help produce um, the settler and workers you do want to leave a couple of forests uh, for the great library later. So as Snaddy says it, the capital will only serve as a settler and worker pump in the beginning. So after your worker, you're going to build either a warrior or a scout, uh, depending on, I guess, what text you started with. And um, then you're going to build four to five archers and grow your capital to the happy cap while doing so. So that means by the time you get to uh, finishing, you're going to need to have archery, finishing with the warrior or scout. After you build the worker and uh, warrior or scout, and then you build four to five archers, then you're going to build a second worker. Then you will go settler, worker, worker, settler, worker, worker, settler. So you're getting one, two, three settlers out of that. Help with some chopping. But like I said before, you're keeping three to four forests for the great library. Um, his plan is to settle the cities toward the neighbors. Uh, you want to block land so that you leave space for other cities later because the computer will compete with you for land. So if you cut them off, uh, you'll leave yourself some extra places uh, to settle. So you're going to have two waves of settling. The first with those three settlers, you know, you built a second worker and then settler, worker, worker, settler, worker, worker, settler. And then while you're doing that, research pottery and writing that will um, head you in the direction of getting an economy. And those workers, some of them are going to connect roads. And every time you connect your cities with roads, you get trade routes. Okay, one city will focus on production and hopefully get either bronze or horses to get more powerful um, units. The second city is hybrid. That means a mixture of production and food and probably commerce. Um, well, it should be able to help in troop production and bring in commerce. And uh, he says you can specialize the city later. But early on, it's to help out in your initial civilization. Your last city, number three, goes for commerce to bring your economy online. In other words, you're going to need to produce gold to support all those cities you're settling, right? 
Um, if you can get some happy resources, they become more valuable at the higher levels because you have less uh, happies and you want to grow your cities as big as possible. So after you're done with that, you're going to build a library after the initial expansion and the blocking and you grow again to the happy cap. In your cities, um, if you're not creative, you need to build a monument so you can expand your borders in your new cities. If you have a two population and you have slavery, you're able to whip a, mon whip a monument. And then you want a barracks also, which you could whip also. Um, whipping sounds unkind, but this is really just a digital, it's really numbers. You have two population in city, you click the key to whip and you have one population um, when you you get the monuments. Um, the barracks should help with your power rating along with the troops that uh, you build. After that, your production city should produce four chariots or axemen. The idea is to get your power graph up so you don't get uh, backstabbed by somebody. Um, you can whip there. Uh, don't whip there. Uh, let it grow to the happy cap. And as soon as you can, run two scientists when the library is done to help him research and to generate the first great scientist. The first great scientist is going to be an academy. So all that should have taken to about 1000 BC. Right? He says don't accept a religion. Um, if you do, you will build enemies early on. You get minuses in diplomacy if you accept the wrong religion and uh, it makes it more likely that people will attack you. So if everybody shares the same one, then that's the one to go to. Um, if they pick the worst enemy, then um, I believe it'll be much less likely that they attack you and then you don't have to worry about them as much. Um, then after that you want to research aesthetics. This serves a dual purpose. First, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, aesthetics um, is good for trading uh, around for other sciences and it's true if you research a couple of turns, maybe two, into alphabet, I checked this on Prince level, uh, they'll actually be willing to trade alphabet for aesthetics. They weren't willing to trade directly alphabet and aesthetics. But when I researched a little. <coughs> so once you get alphabet, you can then look at your other neighbors and do the trades to catch up, like in math and ironworking. Um, like if you're near jungle, you'd want ironworking or you just might want to see where the iron is at anyway. Now, the second use for aesthetics actually is literature. So now you go up to literature and you kept those forests around the capital and you built the library ready. So then you're going to build the great library and you're going to chop it with a few forests. I've gotten the great library every time so far using this method. And uh, literature is also worth some trades as well. I had one computer steal it from me. Uh, using espionage and you know you go back you fill in sailing um, monotheism priesthood um, code of laws is good to get and it is tradable for monarchy or calendar or currency together with literature uh, once code of laws is researched it's not worth as much so to the computer then you want civil service not only to switch to bureaucracy, you avoid, um, oh, what is it? Um, you go to bureaucracy because that will, I believe, also help you get to um, liberalism. Okay, and when the library is done and you're growing and working scientists, 
try squeezing in one more worker and settler and the production city should help producing workers and settlers to backfill all your land as soon as possible. Um, Snaddy suggests you specialize your cities early. He says you only need two production cities and the rest should go for commerce with cottages. Um, he suggests you build enough farms for every city so you can grow quickly into your cottages. Um, he claims you're usually able to settle around eight cities and I was able to do that on Prince level using this method. Um, he claims they won't settle behind your cities even with open borders until very late in the game. Um, all your cities should be defended with archers and have barracks by around 1 AD. An army of eight units consisting of chariots, axes, and swords usually is enough to have a power rating that prevents getting backstabbed. But uh, you have to be a little careful because I noticed people were getting way higher than me on the power graph and I started building units and I had to play catch up. So <coughs> you're going to have to watch that power graph. You don't want to get uh, down to half or below uh, because then they may attack. And if you go on the trade screen and put the arrow over them to see what they're saying, if they say we have enough in our hands right now, they may be plotting to attack. So when you get that great scientist, remember I said the first one will build an academy in the capital because you're running all those scientists from the great library and from the food, the academy will multiply that science. And then you have the workers start to, start to cottage around the capital. That cottaging will help you produce science with the academy in there. And also in bureaucracy, you get if you run bureaucracy, you get plus 50% for hammers and for your commerce. So those cottages will be useful for a bureaucracy capital. So after you build the great library, uh, build a national epic because you're running all those scientists. You're getting great people points. And so you'll pop those scientists that will help you bulb your way to liberalism. Now he suggests you run the two scientists all the time after the great library and the national epic are finished. But um, I didn't do that and my, it slowed my game down. So the next one you use to both philosophy and you switch to pacifism. Adopt the safest religion. The pacifism gives you plus 100% on the great people points. So now you're, you've got the national epic going, you're running multiple scientists, and pacifism are all multiplying your great people points in your capital. So you should get those scientists pretty fast. And so you go next for paper, and next for education, and then next for liberalism. I had to actually research into those some. Now you cannot trade for machinery because then you won't, you can't bulb down that path. Machinery is the key tech to avoid to, to go down that way. And I think it's pretty easy to trade for later on if you want to. Um, if he says here, if the great scientist doesn't arrive in time, backfill some more texts or prerequisites for bulbing li liberalism. So he says you need calendar, metal casting, and compass. Ah, uh, he's right, because I found out that if I didn't research compass, I wasn't able to bulb. So you need calendar. I know you need compass for sure. I'm not sure about calendar and metal casting, but I did run into a problem because I, I didn't research compass ahead of time or get it ahead of time. He does say never trade for cheap text uh, because it only helps the computer. Um, I'm not sure what he means by that, to be honest. Maybe in the discussion thread, he'll say what that means. Okay, so he says in parallel to this, all right, you've settled your land and you got eight cities, at least, all decent size, let it grow. 
and you win the liberalism race, you can stop running pacifism. I like Mansa Musa for this because he has um, he gets the extra gold and he also uh, is spiritual so he can switch civics without anarchy. I think he's ideal personally. Um, once you've won the liberalism race, you can stop running passive. All right, so you switch to theocracy. That gives you plus two experience per unit. But you have to have the religion in the city that you're building the unit. And then you build city raider two maces. So if you have barracks and theocracy, you're going to have two promotions. Build those mace <coughs> maces early on. Because once you get gunpowder, you cannot build them. I ran into that problem. I built gunpowder before I built those maces. And um, I drafted, actually. And I drafted gunpowder units instead of maces. So you, I guess you're actually um, building them from scratch. So um, that's a mistake I made. Six to ten, city raider, two maces. That should actually raise your paragraph. And you have bureaucracy, so that lets you do that. Um, nationalism is the freebie, so you can draft. So again, uh, the spiritual of Mansa Musa will help with that. And nationalism gives Taj Mahal the option uh, you to build it. But if you don't have marble, I noticed, it's a little hard. So your production city has to be really good or you need to find marble to build that Taj Mahal in a decent way. Um, but if you're spiritual, <coughs> you don't need the Golden Age from the Taj Mahal because you can just switch. All right. Now you switch to um, caste system and pacifism and try and build a great merchant in the capital or any other food-rich city. Um, running as many merchants as you can. And he says, if you fail the first time, burn the great person you got for another golden age and repeat. Um, the golden age gives you bonuses on great people points. So, bes so that's a second advantage of that, beside the no anarchy to switch civics. Okay, so when you've done that... Um, now we're up to about 1,000 A.D. Now you're going to pick a victim. And he says put all your espionage points on it. Well, if you haven't built courthouses, you don't have many espionage points. So somewhere in this guide, you must have built courthouses to cut your costs. You have code of laws. And to build those espionage points. So I didn't see that in the guide. You pick a friend. Uh, the guy who's getting a lot of technology with not too many cities. I made the mistake of picking America, and he had a lot of cities on Prince, and it ran me into problems. Better if you can find somebody without many. And you exclusively trade with him. So um, you're going to build him up, and at the same time, you get what you need for rifling. So you're going to get machinery, guilds, engineering, perhaps banking. So he gets a lot of tech, but you get to rifling. And uh, then um, you'll expand through war, and you'll overtake him because you have more land, and that extra land should let you tech faster. But you'll have to do it quickly, and that's another mistake I made. Skip the espionage points. I didn't build enough espionage. If the Apostolic Palace has been built, um, generally it's good to spread it to your cities. Any building from that Apostolic Palace religion gives you two extra hammers. So uh, a monastery, temple, or cathedral will give you two extra hammers each. So that's good production. It's, uh, um, But uh, the main thing for him is you pick that to get the votes in the Apostolic Palace. So you can hopefully block any votes that, for example, might stop your war. Um, 
So he suggests you start with those that have the religion of the apostolic palace or bring some missionaries to spread it because you want to build a blocking majority in the apostolic palace. Um, the early expansion should help you have big cities which should give you more votes in the apostolic palace and later on the UN. Um, he predicts you should be able to get rifling around 1000 AD. On Prince level, I didn't do that. I think I got it closer to 1500 AD. All right. Revolt to nationalism. I was still first, by the way, in my game to rifling. Um, all right. So you revolt to nationalism, either during a golden age or your spiritual, and you, you send the great merchant out. What that great merchant is going to do is going to get you money to upgrade the city raider to macemen to riflemen. Riflemen don't have the city raider promotion. So you need to build them in the macemen and then upgrade the macemen. And you get the gold to upgrade the macemen by that great merchant. And you use that merchant later and you send him to bigger cities and also I think further away. So the bigger and further cities will give you more revenue for the um, merchant. Also, with all of this, you should have built eight to ten spies. And you should have, um, he, he suggests six to eight trebuchets. May, um, if you're not going to use spies, you're going to need a lot more trebuchets at this point. Especially, you know, if you're hitting castles and stuff. While you're teching towards rifling. So, yeah, you really need the, the espionage and the 8 to 10 spies. Uh, and the 6 to 8 trebuchets. Um, build a forge, a market, a theater, and a coliseum in all your cities. So you can deal with the unhappies you get from war. It's called war weariness. The forge gives you happies from certain resources. The market gives you happies from other resources. The theater gives you happies from running the culture slider. And the Colosseum automatically gives you happies. Um, now you build the globe theater. This is a key strategy pretty much in any game because you can... Um, Every turn, you can whip a, another unit in that Globe Theater City, pretty much, because there's no unhappies in a Globe Theater City. So that's an essential, um, lets you build units the whole, the whole game there. Okay, so like I said, um, after rifling, you're going to upgrade, upgrade those City Raider 2 from the money you got from the merchant. Then you're going to use the nationalism you switch to to draft units. And the Globe Theater City is going to let you draft like every turn. I think you can draft about five units a turn. And you have to wait every ten turns for that. So uh, there's a little bit of a technique to drafting. Now he says you can draft two rifles in every city with all the happy buildings. And you can draft forever in your Globe. That means you're really doubling up on like six unhappies, but you'll get two rifles uh, in some of those cities. And the globe, you never, I mean, you can do it forever. Um, without, now he says without raising your culture slider above 20%. So he plans on running the culture slider to make up for some of those unhappies. So he predicts you end up with 30 to 40 rifles and send your spies in first. Now, the reason he says fortify them for five turns is because you get a 50% discount on the espionage point cost in the, in the city. And you do it in the ones you want to conquer. He, he says use four spies per city. In the past, I've used five with a similar strategy. But you will lose some spies. And in fact, uh, if he put a spy in that city, he gets a 50% defense against espionage. So if you're getting espionage, you can settle a spy, you know, put a spy on top of one of your cities 
and that will defend your city like what is it a security bureau so what you do is you revolt the city when you revolt the city the percent defense disappears on the city during the revolt that way you don't have to sit outside the city with your trebuchets and catapults lowering the percent especially at this point they probably have castles so I mean catapults are going to do like one or two percent unless you get extra promotions to help the damage and I don't know the trebuchets are something like four percent I guess now you can turn the spy rate to a hundred percent for some turns to get enough spy points so he thinks it's okay to run your espionage at a hundred percent I haven't done that yet but that's I haven't successfully revolted using this method I've used other methods um, uh, and got a lot of espionage and used that revolting but I can see how it would work in this I just have to get everything working together the right way um, now if you lose all your spies in the city you have the trebuchets uh, you'll lose some of those I like to build trebuchets to replace the ones that I lose in the cities so I'm always planning to lose some trebuchets in these but uh, if they don't revolt the city well you have your trebs to do collateral damage uh, since they damage several units down you throw away a couple of trebuchets and now the units are weak enough for other units to attack um, he says don't bother bombarding the city defenses because it takes way too long and he's right it does take way too long if there's got you know you want a quick battle so you can get on with the rest of the game and not let other people gain while you're at war because while you're building military units you're not building all that other stuff um, he says you can do it in like 10 to 20 turns to defeat the neighbor he says depending if you vassalize him or conquer him usually I conquer them all the way but I with Tokugawa in a game I decided to vassalize him because I like the way his cities put a cushion between me and some of the other computer and it, I ended up winning the game uh, playing Mansa Musa and uh, I took out the Byzantine I was isolated this method helps you tech really fast on, on an isolated situation and then I met Tokugawa which was near my land and I was able to set up uh, some galleys and ferry units over fast enough to defeat Tokugawa so you should have enough cities at this point and production to win the game with different kinds of tactics so he stops the guide and says he'll add a demo game I don't know if I'm gonna do any more I I'm not feeling well today I just decided to play around with games and I decided to read this thank you for your time um, and uh, uh, God bless